Hi. How's it going? Friday, huh? How you all feeling today? Hey, Komal was saying something, but looks like she retracted her message. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. What's it, you know, what's it like now in places where you're at? I remember in Delhi, the last time we spoke, it was raining a lot. I hope it's gotten better there. So this is the last session of surface chemistry, okay? After this, we're going to start with metallurgy, after which we'll do halo alkanes and halo arenes. Oh, before halo alkanes, we'll do isomerism. Hey, Naruto. Hey, Krishna ji. <laughs> Medicophilic Krishna. That's a very interesting name, <laughs> given that we are doing lyophilic uh, and lyophobic things. Hey, I'm great, Sh uh, Aslanji, Sheikh Aslanji. Hey, Deepanvita, Saurav. Hey, Naruto. I'm great. How are you guys doing? And there's a bit of a lag between what I'm saying and what's coming to you, because I'm getting your chats right now. But anyway, that's great. That's great. Good to see all of you here. And how many of you answered last time's homework? How many of you answered last time's homework? Let me just quickly look at that. Hold on. Last session, kaha gaya? Last session was S5. It was oh Kali It was just yesterday. Huh. Looks like homework kuch logo ne hi attempt kiya hai. Okay. Okay, we can solve those questions anyway. Yeah, 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 absolutely, Krishna ji. <laughs> hey Deepu. Hey, hey, Vata. Oh, I have no idea what you're saying, but it sounds like Japanese to me. Uh, instead of Latin, I guess Japanese is the new Latin, huh? Which you, you say sound like Greek and Latin. I'm gonna say it sound like oh, is that or is that Korean? It sounds like Japanese though. Hey, Sakshi, I'm great. How are you doing? How are you doing? Great to see all of you on this chat. Let's do these questions. Looks like Kalka ka homework kisi ne kiya hai. Literally nobody. Which is all right. All right. But theek hai. We'll do it. <laughs> Together. A liquid is found to scatter a beam of light, but leaves no residue when passed through filter paper. The liquid can be described as a suspension, oil, a colloidal solve, or a true solution. Okay. Deepan with a starting the score right away. Yeah, C is the right answer. I'm not waiting for this one because this is there from the last session. Everyone is probably already aware, so I don't want to bore you with the details. This one is C. Yes, Sakshi also agreeing with this. Yeah, this is what is, what is this? This is scatter a beam of light. Okay, that has to do with Tyndall effect. That's what I remember from yesterday's session. And no residue and pass through regular filter paper. If you use maybe ultra filtration, ultra filtration mein kya tha? You had something called a collodion paper, which was 4% nitrocellulose and or katha alcohol and ether and then washed with HCHO, formaldehyde. I know, my both conducive space space use kar but it's all right. You all this there in the last session. Option C ko lock kar diya jaye. Jab toh kahani bata raha tha, Tanu, Aslanji and Naruto. Everybody is saying colloidal salt. That's great. Agla swan. Compared to common colloidal salts, missiles have higher colligative properties, lower colligative properties, same colligative properties, and a dummy option, none of these. Let's remove this one. <laughs> this is a three option MCQ. What do you think? What are colligative properties? Properties dependent on the number of particles, right? If particles normal say zada hai, then I is greater than one. Or if particles expected say kam hai, to I is less than one. So, yeah, and whether it's uh, vapor pressure or delta Tf, delta Kb or pi, all of them are multiplied by this factor i, right? That's what colligative properties are, okay? Now, looks like Dipanvita and Tanu are saying B. I am going to agree, agree with them because as colloidal salts, you know, they kind of aggregate. I know aggregate is like a, not a best term to use over here because aggregate would also mean destruction of colloid. What I'm trying to say is he in a regular, you know, ion kind of a scene, true solution, you'd have them far apart. If they come together, number of particles decrease. So yes, this is the right answer. B is the right answer. Naruto and Sheikh Arslan agreeing, agreeing with me. Okay. Naruto, the only thing I'm not saying your full name is because it has too many syllables. Uzumaki. Okay. Oh, this is a cartoon, Naruto, isn't it? You're not going to like it when I say cartoon. Fine. Anime. Same difference. Okay. You're going to hate me after I said that. I know. Anyway, this side. Yeah. Wait, this side, sahi to tha? This way. <laughs> yeah, these are the things we're going to look at right now. Classification of colloids. We're going to continue with the properties of these guys. And then, ye wale chote wale parts hai. Emulsion and colloids around us. Yeah. Have you checked out NCRT already? Have you, have any of you read it? If yes, great. If not, please, is session ke baad padhiega. Let's start off with the most important part about all of this colloid ka ki kahani. The charge on colloidal solutions, yeah. 
everything we're going to do today has to do with this charge. And in last session, I think somebody asked me which of these properties don't depend on charge. And that was an interesting question. I think it was Rudraksh. But anyway, so this charge wala business, remember, in the last session, I showed you something like this. Ki FE 3 plus adsorb hota hai on FE OH, right? Something like that. So, this is some theories, hai, right? Colloidal particles always have charge. This was one instance of showing you that this charge was developed. Hua tha. FeOH whole thrice was there. Usme I put some ions, Fe, you know, Fe3 plus ions extra, they were absorbed Anyway, colloids always have charge and that's what stabilizes them. Hai? And this charge is the same. Yani ki either positive or negative. If one place is positive, hai, then all of them are going to be positive. If it's negative, hai, then all of them are going to be negative. What all I'm trying to say is that it's the same sign. Hoga. Sign will not change from one particle to the other particle of the same colloid in the same solution. If it changes, then they will come together, right? And you don't want that. You want colloid to be stable. Okay. That's the first idea. Now, here are some examples. Now, this is the part that you're going to have to make flash flashcard out of. You have to screenshot. Le lo. Positively charged salts. Hydrated metallic oxides. Metallic oxide means Al2O3, Fe2O3, hydrated means dot XH2O. Now, the reason for this being positively charged actually is a little bit more complicated. Because this forms something like this. I'm not going to go into detail. But let's say this is 6. I don't know if this is true or not. But this has to do with coordination, okay? Coordination chemistry. And we don't study it at all. Why it happens, what happens. But just to give you a bit of a hint. Okay, if you want to read up more of this, this is your best friend, this book. Um, not needed for neat at all, but if you want to know ki bhai, kyun hai, pe plus charge kya hai, what's happening, it's because of these guys being formed. Anyway, negatively charged salts, I told you all the metals, yeah, they are hydrophobic uh, when they form salts, just pure metals, okay? And these are negatively charged salts usually. Basic dye stuff. Now, when I say basic, I don't mean basic in the lingo that Gen Z uses, and I don't mean basic in terms of you know, let's just say I mean basic in terms of, you know, Lewis base. Us point of view say basic dye, like methylene blue solution. Salt, salt, not solution, sorry. Uh, metallic sulfides are also negatively charged. We looked at some of these, their preparation. Yeah, arsenic sulfide was uh, formed by the chemical way of forming this, right? You remember this? Hey, good evening. I'm great, Anirudhji. Oh, wow, man. Okay. That's interesting. In 2017... Huh. Okay. That's quite crazy. That's quite interesting, Anirudh. Huh. Awesome to see you. Good evening. I'm great. I hope you're good, good as well. I'm trying to recall this because... Okay. Okay. Great, man. <laughs> we, we're going to chat on this. I, I, I think you had pinged on the other day as well, right? I teach chem on uh, Telegram. Ping me if you like. Anyway, common charge solves... It's, Thank you for pinging here, Anirudh. Abhinandan, hi, hi, hi. Some more charged ones, yeah? Hemoglobin is positively charged, negatively charged. Our acid dies. Hmm. What kind of acid? Let's just call it a Lewis acid to be safe, right? Uh, now, this is interesting. Acid charged dyes are negative and base is positive. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? Think about this. Think about this. The mechanism and all that, why is it not in our syllabus, mein hai, but there's some food for thought. Once I tell you as to how, the, what, what is the basis of this charge, which we read in preferential absorption theory, maybe you'll get an idea, ki, okay, it could be because of this. Khair. Anyway, you can re always read up more online if you like. Oxides like TiO, TiO2, now this is one of the easiest nanoparticles to make. I'm not kidding with you, right? You literally just have to take... Uh, some titanium oxide, which powder you get, put it in a microwave, either this or even zinc oxide, right? Literally microwave mein dalo and you get nanoparticles. Not in your own microwave at home. Maybe if you have a lab and the lab has a microwave, do it there, uh, which you'll probably have at college and not right now because yeah, labs don't have microwaves in school unless you go to a really fancy school. Anyway, <laughs> some more negatively charged salts. I'm trying to make this interesting for you. Otherwise, you just have a bunch of names here that are positively and negatively charged. Make it a little boring. Uh, here are your examples from some more negatively charged salts. Okay, let's get on to some interesting ideas on, you know, what exactly is this whole charge thing about. 
क्लियरली बिकॉज देर इज गोट बी रिपल्शन बिटवीन डिफरेंट चार्ज पार्टिकल्स इसलिए एग्रीगेट नहीं होता है हेंस इट प्रोवाइड स्टेबिलिटी टू दीज थिंग्स एंड दिस आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द फर्स्ट पॉइंट ठीक है नो डाउट सो फार राइट एम जस्ट चेकिंग इन है शालनी गुड इवनिंग जस्ट चेकिंग इन इफ यू गाइज एज यूजल हैव एनी डाउट्स प्लीज फील फ्री टू पिंग मी एनी टाइम इन बिटवीन I am very fascinated by Mr. Anirudh Das because I've been at Baidu since since 2016. I'm been teaching in an offline place. Oh, you were in an offline. I don't. I'm not able to figure this guy out. Anirudh Das. That's very interesting, though. Or did you check out our videos? We did make some neat and jay videos in 2016 and 17. We started, in fact, back then putting things on the app. I'm just trying to place this guy here. Anyway, back to the session. <laughs> Sorry. How do colloidal particles acquire charge? Three different ways. Okay. Electron capture by salt particles during electro dispersion of metals. We looked at that, right? हमने Bredig's आग देखा था कि वो उसकी वजह electricity की वजह से vaporize हो जाता है and stuff. That's one theory. Mm, that was the first one to start off with, but we have better ones now. This is the one that's the most widely accepted. These are lines directly from NCERT. ठीक है. Preferential adsorption of ions from solution and the last one is formation of electrical double layer. This last chap is going to be the most useful if you choose to do research later on. is something called zeta potential which we'll just look at very briefly is cheese ko hum log uh, is is what the most practical applicable uh, practically applicable thing is okay anyway uh, all good you're all here right i'm just checking in sab log yahan pe hain everyone's like alive and kicking cuz i haven't seen anything on the chat for a minute because i guess this chapter is one of those chapters right like kahani hai sab log kahani sun rahe everyone's like hopefully listening in really well <laughs> yeah 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 hey naruto okay hey sakshi oh that's a There's a medical heart there. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Zero potential. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, great. So, what is this preferential adsorption of ions? Preferential adsorption of ions. Three English words, right? Preferential means that one के बदले में दूसरा adsorption तो आप जानते ही हैं. Ions, charged particles, right? Okay. So, अगर एक से ज़्यादा मतलब two or more ions are present in the dispersion medium. What is dispersion medium? This is just like the solvent. Okay, मतलब the stuff in a larger quantity. Then कोलॉइड पार्टिकल से जो कॉमन आयन है वो एड्सॉर्ब करेगा इसका क्या मतलब है एक एग्जांपल साथ बताता हूं तो यहां पे AgNO3 है और Ki है ये दोनों का मैं ले रहा हूं ठीक है इन दोनों में मैं AgNO3 बहुत ज्यादा डाइल्यूटेड है और Ki भी बहुत ज्यादा डाइल्यूटेड है द रीजन वाई वी से दिस बहुत ज्यादा डाइल्यूटेड वाली चीज बिकॉज वेन वी इंक्रीज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन थिंग्स डोंट गो एज एक्सपेक्टेड ठीक है विद डैट यू नीड अ डिफरेंट थियोरी वॉट वी आर स्टडिंग इज नॉट गर्क सो इसलिए थोड़ा सा सेटिंग अप द बेसिक एस टू दिस इज व्हाट यू टेक सो यू टेक एजीएनओ3 अ नोन कंसंट्रेशन नोन अमाउंट एंड बहुत ज्यादा केआई डाल देते हैं उसमें उससे क्या होता है कि बहुत ज्यादा केआई डालने से मतलब कि पूरा एजीएनओ3 रिएक्ट हो जाता है एंड दिस इज एन एक्सेस रिएजेंट मतलब दिस इज लेफ्ट लेफ्ट बिहाइंड तो उसका क्या मतलब होगा व्हेन एक्सेस है इसको पानी में डाला तो दिस विल गिव मी के प्लस एंड आई माइनस आयंस राइट इस एन आयन कंपाउंड पानी में डालते आयन देगा ओके सो इन माय सॉल्यूशन वाटर आई हैव अ प्रेसिपिटेट एजीआई राइट दैट्स व्हाट दिस डाउनवर्ड एरो मींस एंड आई हैव केएनओ3 ओके एंड आई आल्सो हैव आई माइनस आयन बट द आई माइनस आयन आर व्हाट आर इंटरेस्टिंग या मैंने राइट साइड में ही लिखा है कि आई माइनस आयन है बट लेफ्ट एंड राइट साइड डोंट मैटर राइट ये तो हमारे लिए हम लोग इक्वेशन लिखते हैं लेफ्ट और राइट साइड नेचर में तो अगर एक्सेस है तो वो तो रहेगा ही ना सॉल्यूशन में तो इसीलिए let's say at the end where do i write this at the end you have this chap you have k plus ions you have no3 minus ions and you have i minus ions theek hai which are from here now these extra i minus ions they get preferentially adsorbed from the dispersion medium hence it has a negative charge is this idea clear ye bahut baar pucha gaya hai jee mein neet mein state exams mein sab jagah ये आइडिया और दूसरा वाला नेक्स्ट वाला भी है डिड यू गाइज अंडरस्टैंड दिस तो इस केस में के आई इज इन एक्सेस ठीक है ए जी आई इज गेंग प्रेसिपिटेटेड सो वॉट इज इन एक्सेस उसका कॉमन आयन कौन सा है आई माइनस सिंस द कॉमन आयन इज आई माइनस आई माइनस एडजॉर्ब हो जाता है आफ्टर आउटसाइड ऑफ ए जी आई सो ए जी आई इज ऑलरेडी अ सॉलिड इट हैज नो चार्ज नथिंग इट्स अ प्रेसिपिटेट बट आई माइनस उसको बाहर आके उसको छोटा कर देता है नेट्स वॉट कोलॉइड्स गेट फॉर्म ओके साक्षी सेज क्लियर i'm hoping that everybody else also has understood who's on this call who's on this uh, chat right now take the same thing but flip things a little bit okay the this is the same highly diluted ki solution highly diluted agno3 solution but now i take agno3 in excess yani ki 
at the end i have agi and i have ag plus ions and have and i have no3 minus ions and ki pura use up ho jata hai theek hai because this is in excess okay so now my extra ion is ag plus and this gets preferentially adsorbed on my colloid so i have this ag i colloid aur usme plus 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 charge aa jate hain and just to have a similar thing here i have agi the colloid let me make that again and then your minus 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 ye i ki wajah se yahan pe aur ye agi hai hamara colloid so that you know the, when you if you get the notes and this part is clear ye hai ag plus theek hai all right so ye wala hai positively charged salt इस पे बहुत बार सवाल आ चुके हैं इन द टेस्ट आई हैव सीन सम स्टूडेंट्स मैसेज अप अरे ये क्या हो गया खैर एनीवे एक और एग्जांपल है फेरिक ऑक्साइड फेरिक ऑक्साइड इज द सॉल्व दैट आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट नाउ फेरिक ऑक्साइड में अगर मैं एफ थ्री एड करूं तो क्या होगा यही था हमने जो पहले देखा था राइट एफ प्लस चार्जेज आ जाते हैं तो एफ प्लस चार्ज की वजह से पॉजिटिवली चार्ज सॉल्व बन जाता है ऑफ अ हाइड्रेटेड ऑक्साइड मैं जो आपको बता रहा था कि यह है एफ ई एंड दिस गाइड Similarly, now instead of hot water, अगर मैं NaOH में डालूं सेम चीज को देन आई हैव एक्स्ट्रा ओ एच माइनस आई ऑन्स ओके एंड दीज गेट अब्जॉर्ब नाउ यू मे बी लाइक वेट अ मिनट ये तो एफ ई टू ओ थ्री डॉट एक्स एच टू है यहाँ पे ओ एच माइनस आई ऑन आया कहां से हाँ थिंग्स गेट अ लिटिल कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हियर आई एम जस्ट गोन लीव इट एट द फैक्ट दैट एच टू ओज अ पोलर मॉलिक्यूल एंड इट इज हाइड्रेटेड बट पानी में डालने के बाद ऑब्वियसली Water goes away. So why am I still writing it as hydrated? Again, because there's a concept of a complex and all being there. It's like OH minus ion is there, and this is a negatively charged salt. ठीक है? Let's take that as a statement of fact for now and move on. Is this all right? Everything I've said so far. I think this was the most complicated idea in this uh, session from the point of view of cognitive load. यार थोड़ा सा अगर जो भारी चीज़ थी वो just this. After this, most of it is back to कहानी कहानी and more कहानी. Are we all good here? Yeah. Now, ये चीज मैं आपसे एक चीज पूछा इस, ये इसके बाद एवरीथिंग बिल्ड्स अप अ लिटिल बिट ऑन दिस या कि ये जो चार्ज कोलोइडल पार्टिकल्स है और काउंटर आयन है उसमें कोई समथिंग इज देर समथिंग गोइंग ऑन व्हाट इज अ काउंटर आयन आई माइनस जो ए जी आई पे आया ठीक है बहुत ढेर सारे आई माइनस आया डज के प्लस इट्स काउंटर आय ऑन एनी थिंग एनी थिंग टू डू विद दिस थिंक अबाउट इट इट शुड इट शुड राइट ग्रेट साक्षी थैंक्स फॉर द इनपुट it should so there are this is a sum, summary of what we have done so far right ki ag i and i minus ag i and ag plus iska counter ion hoga k plus iska counter ion ho gaya i minus theek hai so ye attract karta hai to this so there is now this is already found sort of a particular let me just show it to you instead of these words these words are here because they are from ncrt theek hai so let me just read it out for you Selective adsorption, common ion on surface, colloidal child, uh, colloidal particle acquires acquires a negative or positive charge, right? That's what these two guys are. And then this charged layer attracts counter ions. Counter ion मतलब ये आपको समझा दिया मैंने. From the medium to form a second layer. इसको मैं दिखाई देता हूँ तो बहुत बात कर दी. ये है I minus ion. ये है हमारा, you know, what do you call this? Stabilization of colloid, right? And इसका counter ion I on counter I on. <laughs> R I B, and it forms a nice protective layer. Now this is the fixed layer. So there's A G I and I minus and K plus, which is a counter ion that comes over here. ये fixed layer होगी. अब अब देखिए इसके बाद भी there are a lot of A G plus, there are a lot of K plus and I minus ions that are going to hang around, right? And this is like a diffuse layer. And this whole thing together is what gives stability to the colloids. Okay? and this is called you see it's actually moving really slowly if you see look at the diagram behind me very clearly right there's a fixed layer there's a diffuse layer etc anyway so now this there are two layers right hence this is called the helm holds double layer electrical double layer electrical kyun there are positive and negative charges now because there are positive and negative charges that are separated they're not mixing they're separated so there can be a small electric field that develops electric field matlab ki basically potential difference hoga right positive and negative charge separate karo to potential difference ho jata hai is potential difference ko agar hum log measure kare isi cheez ko hum log zeta potential bolte hain theek hai 
So the combination of these two layers of opposite charges around the colloidal particle is known as Helmholtz electrical double layer. Pehla wala layer tha, ions ka. This is great, this is a fixed layer. Second one is of the, the second layer of ions is also K plus, the plus and minus ions. And this is mobile, which was what we showed you by this guy. This is the second layer. And this is the first layer. Okay, fixed and diffuse layer. I already told you what zeta potential was, but that's coming up right, right before, right, right over here. Now these opposite charges on the fixed and the diffuse layers, they result in a potential difference. And this is what is called the electrokinetic potential or the zeta potential. We good? Just checking in. Just checking in. So, yehi chiz humko stability deti hai solves ki. I told you long back, I think, 2-3 session pehle jamne colloid shuru kya, tabhi humne bataya tha ki, dekhye, solves are stable because of charges. Or ye charge ka concept theory that works out the best, it was the preferential absorption wala theory. Uske baad humne baat ki ki, okay, there is something called the Helmholtz double layer. Double layer kaun sa? Ek fixed layer, ek diffuse layer. Fixed layer ka charges was due to preferential, preferential absorption. And then counter ions bhi aaye wahan pe. In dono ko saath mein leke fixed layer bani. Phir next your diffuse layer which is all of the general charge particles coming closer to this fixed layer. That is the second layer. In dono ke beech mein potential difference is zeta potential. And uh, I think you literally get a potential meter too. You can, you can measure that, yeah. So, we have, I've done this research in the lab and uh, this is how you know that the nanoparticles you made are good. Because the nanoparticles basically are colloids. A lot of nanoparticles that you make, uh, I don't know how it is right now, but in research labs back in 2012, graphene oxide was like the thing. Everybody wanted to work on graphene oxide. And to make these particles, we would use two, three different ways. And you, we would use centrifugation to kind of separate them out, all these funky things. So, yeah, all of it is pretty interesting actually. So I know that all of you are going to be doctors uh, and some of you may go into research and I keep telling you more about research than uh, you know the actual course of MBBS itself uh, because all of this could be useful there yeah if you choose to do research or B farm or anything else. All right great. Electrophoresis is the next thing we're going to talk about. Next property we have looked at the charge of colloidal particles in detail. We look at co coagulation of respiration right after that. Electrophoresis may be a funny and you know big word but Electro and movement. Let's just call it that. Yeah, movement of stuff because of electricity. Hmm. Let electricity is set, but because of electrical fields. Okay, this is something that confirms the presence of charge on colloidal particles, and this is a setup that we have to do it. Okay, now these red things over here in this nice little diagram, or right over here, these are colloid particles. Okay, these red things right here. Let me just put a C over there. Dispersion medium particles. Matlab ki pani. Okay. As, a, as an example, the gray stuff here, maybe is water. Okay, cool. Now, there is this, I think the red one is usually live. So this is usually plus and black is negative, right? Neutral and live. I think that's how these colors are. Yeah, you remember that from physics? Red and black and all of that? Live wire and the the neutral wire? It's not ground warm. Yeah. Just two terminals and everything we do, we just look at, we, we just show two terminals. Physics say, kisi ko ye cheeze yaad aari hai? Quick check-in. I know I keep asking you things about physics because this is relevant to them, yeah? So there's a thing called instrumentation engineering, by the way, where they make all these funky things. Khair, nahi yaad that's okay. Let's focus on what's happening here, right? As soon as I turn, you know, like finish this circuit, I connect a battery over here with those leads, I connect them to a, a battery. What happens is charged particles move to either the cathode or the anode. Why either the cathode or the anode? Because, well, the charge is going to be one of them. Agar cathode ke paas gaya, kaun sa charge hoga, dosto? Please tell me, if it's going to the cathode, what charge will it be of the colloids? Is it going to have a plus charge or a minus charge? What do you think? Inputs, please. This is where I want you to be active. Bahut kahani aap ne sun li. Uh, please batayye. Is this charge positive or negative? These red guys. Okay, yeah, straightforward. Obviously, they have to be. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asaf and Dipanvita. Ah, Sakshi, it has to be positive, right? Cathode here is negative. Why? Because we cations here, we call it cathode. Bolte. When you do electrolysis, in your, what do you say? It was the other one. voltage cell is the other Carrying it. Cathode pay reduction hota hai or anode pay oxidation. That always holds good. Okay. 
सो दीज आर पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल इन द एग्जाम्पल आई टेकन इफ यू आर नेगेटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल दूसरी तरफ चले जाता नो बिग डील नाउ वॉट हैपन्स क्लियरली इज दैट की अब यहां पर जो बीच में है नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल रिड्यूस हम्म सो हाउ डज इज कन्फर्म दैट देर इज देर आर चार्ज पार्टिकल्स बिकॉज वॉट हैपन्स इज की अरे जब ये प्लस चार्जेस यहां पर आए दे विल इमीडिएटली एक्सेप्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड वन से एक्सेप्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बेचारे कोलॉइड पार्टिकल्स will lose the charge they will lose stability and they will settle down so you will see these you know things starting to settle down and come right to the bottom of this and that's how you know for sure ki are yaar yeah they were charged <laughs> so anyway after electric potential ya fir ek uh, potential difference is applied this is what you see okay sakshi great 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 so this is what electrophoresis is movement of colloidal particles under applied potential that's it that's it अगर कोलॉइड पॉजिटिवली चार्ज है दिल मूव टू कैथोड अगर नेगेटिवली चार्ज है तो एनोड की तरफ जाएगा अब ये कैनोड कैथोड क्या है यू रिमेंबर दिस एनोड इज ऑक्सीडेशन राइट नेगेटिवली चार्ज अगर है समथिंग लाइक सीएल माइनस एंड इट एक्सेप्ट सीएल माइनस तो नहीं है बट ठीक है जो भी है आई माइनस हमने देखा था ना अभी तक ठीक है आई माइनस और इलेक्ट्रॉन एक्सेप्ट नहीं करेगा इट विल गिव अवे इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड बिकम आई टू गैस और समथिंग राइट सो दैट मीन्स अगर ये होता है तो ये ऑक्सीडेशन है तो दैट्स इट तो नेगेटिव होगा राइट सिंपल चीज है कि नेगेटिव थिंग्स गो देयर एंड दिस मस्ट बी पॉजिटिव दिस नेगेटिव बेसिक्स यार रिमेंबर दैट एंड यू विल बी गुड यू डोंट नीड ऑल ऑफ दिस फॉर दिस चैप्टर बट अगर कभी भूल गए एग्जाम में तो दिस इज अ गुड वे टू चेक द नेक्स्ट आईडिया आई वांट टू लुक एट इज इलेक्ट्रो ऑस्मोसिस वेरी सिमिलर टू इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस बट द डिफरेंस इज कि इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस में मैं बोल रहा था कि लेट्स मूव दिस कोलॉइड्स अराउंड हियर आई एम सेइंग कि नहीं बाबा लेट्स नॉट मूव इट लेट्स पुट आउट parchment there let's put a membrane there that stops the movement of colloidal particles you know why would i do that if i put a semi permeable membrane membrane this is my good old spm then i would force a sort of a pressure to get formed over here because in this case if they are all charged particles they are trying to go in again to the cathode they won't be able to is taraf ke chale jayenge but is taraf ke na ja payenge and hence there will be a pressure there will be like a huge not a huge but there will be a partial pressure over here that will be there theek hai and uh, yeah and in a way what you are doing is you are kind of purifying the colloid also right because you are pushing the dispersed medium particles this way you are pushing everything else out you only have colloids over here so in a way you are increasing the concentration of colloids um and this this process is known as electro osmosis any doubts here let's say a quick question hey good evening shweta let's say a quick question the movement of colloidal particles under applied current is known as electrodialysis dialysis electrophoresis or none of the above what do you think electrophoresis yeah good job deepanvita absolutely simple stuff movement is phoresis if you don't want to move you put the same permeable membrane there that stops the movement of these guys okay great 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 going good job shweta so what happens if you neutralize the charge i have already given you the answer to this right in electrophoresis wahi to hota hai wo jo charge hota hai wo neutralize ho jata hai kyun kyunki the battery is either pulling electrons or giving away electrons if it's giving electrons positive charges get it they get neutralized if it's pulling electrons the negative charges come there and they also like are yaar le lo le lo itna electron lena hai and that precipitates out so pulling away of charges or Neutralizing charges leads to coagulation, yeah, for precipitation. Yes, Shalini, Sakshi, C is the right answer on that question. Absolutely, good job, good job. So, what exactly is coagulation or precipitation? Sometimes you're like, yeah, colloids are good, but maybe I want them to stop behaving like colloids. I don't want them anymore. You may have reasons to do that. Salts are stable because of charges. Now, if you remove the charge, they will aggregate, and that's why I told you the main theme of this. सेशन टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी द चार्ज ऑन पार्टिकल्स या सो पहले हमने सीखा चार्ज क्या होता है देन हमने सीखा कि चार्ज की कुछ प्रॉपर्टीज कैसे स्टडी कर सकते हैं नाउ वेलाइक अच्छा चार्ज को हटाएंगे तो एग्रीगेट हो जाएगा या फिर प्रेसिपिटेट हो जाएगा सो दे यू गो हियर इट इज राइट दिस इज द चार्ज पार्टिकल एज सुन रिमूव द चार्ज द पोअर चैप जस्ट प्रेसिपिटेट दैट्स अ फनी स्मॉल सिमुलेशन टू शो दैट ऑल राइट सो दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ एग्रीगेशन into an insoluble precipitate is called coagulation or precipitation of the soil this is from ncrt uh things for you to remember for the test cool now how do you coagulate lyo 
phobic salts. We're going to look at philic as well. Let's focus on phobic ones first. You guys are laughing. Okay, that's good. <laughs> cool, I guess. All right. What is the method for coagulation of lyophobic salts? Right? You got multiple of them. First one I've already told you. Electrophoresis, I've already told you. Mixing of two oppositely charged salts is exactly what sound like. Boiling is interesting. We look at that. By persistent dialysis. Dialysis is what We look at that. Or by addition of electrolytes. All of this has to do with the idea of charge. Charge ko hatana basically. Electrophoresis I told you. This positive charge has gone here. Positive charge say accepts electrons and then it precipitates. That's it. Yeah. So they gets this, that gets charge and precipitates. So electrophoresis causes this to happen. If I mix two oppositely charged salts, 100%, this will neutralize. If I have a plus charge, I know from my studies, I put a negative charge there, gone. Okay. And this is known as mutual coagulation because you're messing up two different salts. So for example, I take a positive salt like hydrated ferric oxide. You remember how we formed this? We put FeCl3 on FeO3, Fe2O3, right? And you get hydrated ferric oxide, which has a plus charge. And then arsenous sulfide, which is As2S3, which you form by a chemical method, is a negative salt. In dono ko leke aao, aur dono precipitate ban jate hain. Ek teer, do nishane and all of that. This is, was an example of mixing two oppositely charged salts. The next one was interesting. Coalition by boiling. Haan, boiling se kyun hoga? Why would it break down? Because I thought ki Brownian motion jo hota hai, which is because of temperature at which anything is at, that's good. It brings about stability of colloids. Sure. But if you increase the temperature too much, like literally by boiling it, the layers that we spoke of, the Helmholtz double layer and all that, wasab toot jata hai. All of that goes away. Because boiling is a very, very vigorous, violent process, right? So that's it. If you mess up with the charges, mm, same thing happens, right? Increase collisions and yeah, they precipitate out. That's the thing, right? So, but that's a good thing. We are trying to precipitate lyo phobic salts just to quick reminder in all of this kahani ye cheez na bhule ki hum log lyophobic ki baat kar rahe hain abhi tak persistent dialysis you remember i said in the last session that look to purify a colloid you may need the dialysis is good but agar aap bahut zyada dialysis karte gaye sare hi ions nikal denge bechara colloid bachega and precipitate remember in the last session also i mentioned that there is this goldilocks zone of just enough electrolytes if I happen to take all of them out and there's only the colloidal salt, then yeah, it becomes unstable and coagulates. Cool? Any doubts so far? Any doubts? We good here? We are around the halfway mark of this session. We're just checking in everything is good. If everyone here is, you know, following what we're saying. It sounds like kahani, 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 but I just want to make sure that it's all good. Okay, Poonam, thank you. Thank you for that input. Huh. Now, in this section about this whole coagulation business, this one thing that a lot of questions are asked on, this one idea, that's what I want to discuss right now. Right? What is the amount of electrolytes that you need to add? Like, or like, how do you know what electrolyte to add and how much of it is good? Uh, that's what we're going to look at. Oppositely charged ions, we have understood that, right? And these ions are called as coagulating or flocculating ions. You've heard that saying, right? Birds of the same feather flock together. So flock say word aya, flocculating. Jo bhi naya shabd aata hai na, uske word root pe jao. Word power made easy. A book by Norman Lewis. That's a good book to have if you're trying to learn English. Where do I write this? Word power made easy by Norman Lewis. I think that was his name. Just check author I think wait But this is the name of the book. For English. Anyway. This leads to coagulation and negative ion causes the precipitation of positive ions, etc. etc. opposite be opposite. But if I use different electrolytes to coagulate the same solution, which means ki, dekho, I know I have a negative charge, but uske saath mein, agar NaCl dalu, ya NaNO3 dalu, ya Na2SO4 dalu, ya Na3PO4 dalu, does that matter? Or should I use Mg2 or you know, should, should I use MgOH whole twice or should I use aluminium sulfate? Now, which is a good flocculating agent? That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, that's the, that's the main idea that we're trying to kind of nail down. Some of these things that I told you, we'll be able to answer with this 
Hardy Schulz rule. Some of them, we have no idea. The easy thing we'll tackle first, okay, which is just the number of uh, the charge. Yeah, if I have a greater, you know, the higher the valency of the flagellating ion, the greater its power to cause coagulation. What does this mean? Do you guys understand this statement? Iska matlab hai ki agar main negatively charged ion le raho, some negatively charged thing that I solve that I want to coagulate. So if I take Na plus or if I take Mg two plus or if I take Al three plus, out of these three, this guy has the highest power of coagulation, which means ki kyunki iska charge three plus hai, so I'll need a smaller amount of aluminium as compared to magnesium and I'll need the most amount of sodium to coagulate this negative salt. Is this idea all right? Just in the terms of theory. We'll put a number to it very soon. Is this idea all right? Similarly, if I have a negative charge, or an ion ho, negatively charged salt, then for that, I would say that something with a charge of 4 minus, Fe, Cn6, 4 minus, would be much better than PO4 minus, would be much better than SO4 minus, much better than Cl minus. So all you've got to do in this whole hardy schulz rule is identify that my colloidal salt is what charge hai? and then its opposite charge is what it is. And if agar the ion ki valency is more, then it is a very good coagulating agent. One more extra thing is, if the ion is small, Matlab ki it has a very high polarizing power. That is also a good flocculating agent. Uh, NCRT mein ek line sawal pucha gaya hai at the end of the chapter. What was you know, kuch tha ki another idea of hardy Schulz like or what, would, what was hardy Schulz rule missing? hardy Schulz rule miss, is talking about the number of, you know, the valency and all of that. It does not talk about polarizability or polarizing power. Aapne ye padha hoga shayad bonding mein or even periodic properties mein, right, in 11th grade. कि अगर छोटा आयन है, then it has a very, it's highly polarizable and all of that. तो इसीलिए that is also good for that that has a much higher flocculating value, which means कि say lithium is better than Na plus. Not something going to be tested in NEET, but just as an example there. ठीक है. सवाल लेते हैं कुछ. The ability of an anion to bring about coagulation of a given colloid depends on magnitude. Magnitude and charge. Charge only. Sign of charge. Which one do you think? Four options. So, anion ki amlog baat karen. And we want to coagulate any colloid, whatever we have, right? So, what, of the, what matters? Just the magnitude and charge or charge only or sign of charge only? What do you guys think? Dipan Vita and Shalini are both saying B. Both magnitude charge. Yeah. AIPMT 1997. Every time there's a both or all of these, usually, sadly, a cheap trick, but that works. But we can, don't use that. Don't use that. If both have all of the other market. But yeah, usually I've seen uh, in NEET that that tends to happen. But anyway, good job. Good job on that. Arsalan, Kapil. Oh, new chaps here. Great. Science. Arkisman Mukherjee. Also right. B. Deepu also saying B. Good job. All right. So how do you measure the amount of electrolyte required to coagulate a salt? That is called the coagulating or flocculating value. To put numbers to it, right? The minimum concentration of electrolyte in millimoles required to cause the coagulation of one liter of colloidal solution. Okay. So millimoles of this electrolyte. Electrolyte kaan se I told you about one of the ions. But whereas, where it also needs to have a counter ion, right? A counter ion can be, can, can be sulfate, it can be chloride, it could be whatever else. So, dono together basically make the electrolyte. One of these plus one of these, right? So, we're talking about the millimoles of this electrolyte required to cause coagulation of one liter of colloidal solution. That's it. If you want to put some math around it, this is what it is. Yeah? Volume of solution liter denominator, millimoles of electrolyte in numerator. And this is a unit of flocculating or coagulating value. Numericals could come on this. Whose name? Oh, are, are, yeah, I, I gave it a, how do I pronounce it? Can you help me with that phonetically maybe? Arkisman. Maybe I'm like a little vilayati when I say 
Archie man? Did I say Archie's man? Sorry. Archie's man, maybe. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Help me out there. So, what does coagulating value depend on? Coagulating value would decrease with increase in charge on the coagulating iron. This is just trying to say that I would need a lot lesser, a lot smaller quantity of aluminium ions than magnesium ions than Na plus ions if I had a negative charge. Similarly, I would need a very, very small quantity of PO4 3 minus as compared to SO4 2 minus as compared to Cl minus or I minus or whatever. This idea is clear, right? And it's good to have a small coagulating value, a good, uh, a, a highly effective coagulating, what do you call it, Flo flocculating ion would mean ki bahut kam quantity mein kam chal jai. So this is a good thing. This is not a negative thing. This is a good thing. The coagulate, coagulating power is inversely proportional to coagulating value. Yes, sab maths lagta hai fancy hai, but it's really not, right? If you understand the basics. Any, 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 uh, any doubts here? All good? We, we good here? Just checking in. Once you under, understand the theory, sawal baat asaan ho gaya. doubt hai, push lo, iske baad sawal aane wale I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay? No? Okay, great Poonam. Good to know. Alright, Sheikh. Good stuff, good stuff. Here's the question then. Chalo, karte hain. Shweta ji. Good, good, good. No question. I mean, no doubts. Great. Which of the following electrolytes will have the maximum flocculation value for FeOH whole thrice sol? Hmm. FeOH whole thrice sol. Pehli baat humko pata karni hai ki bhai ye positive sol hai ya negative sol hai. Once you know that, then you're gonna have to apply ki achha, uska opposite charge yahan lana padega. Have you been paying attention? This is the moment of truth. Remember, what we're asking for is the maximum flocculation value. And interestingly, actually, socha jai to, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how to scam this question too, very quickly. Okay. Poonam and Kapil are both saying B. Poonam and Kapil are both saying B. B Q? I don't understand either. Very interesting. Very interesting. Achha. Achha. I see what's going on. What, what, what do the rest of you think? Shweta is also saying B. Do you want to tell me why B? You want to tell me why B? I thought it would be A. Okay, everybody has identified that this is a positive sol. Hai. Okay? We are assuming that it is a positive sol. If it is a negative sol, hota, to life would become a little bit more complicated. If it is a negative sol, if it is OH minus ion. Hote. Achha, okay. No, this is a negative sol, it is a positive sol. Hold on, hold on. I have said it again. This is a negative sol. Because all I have is I have Fe2O3 and I put it in NaOH then I get Fe, FeOH whole thrice. Right? So negative sol hai, and I need a positive ion that is the has the least charge. Out of these Na plus has a small one the, the smallest charge NH4 plus also has a small charge K plus also has a small charge. So this is negative or positive? Hai, yaar. By the way, tell me one कुछ लोग ए बोल रहे हैं कुछ लोग बी बोल रहे हैं अब मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है शेख इज सेइंग ए दीपान्विता सेइंग ए तो आई थिंक जो लोग बी बोल रहे हैं वो लोग अज्यूम कर रहे हैं जो लोग बी बोल रहे हैं वो लोग अज्यूम कर रहे हैं कि एक नेगेटिव सॉल है और जो लोग ए बोल रहे हैं वो लोग अज्यूम कर रहे हैं कि पॉजिटिव सॉल है करेक्ट हैव आई अंडरस्टूड योर रीजनिंग करेक्टली Is that, is that what you guys were thinking? Shweta, Kapil and Deepu who said B. Right? And then Sheikh and Dipanvita said A. So when Sheikh and Dipanvita are saying A, then this would make sense. Agar ye positive sol hota or chloride ion sabse zyada chahi hoga mujhe because it has charge negative 1. Isme negative 2 hai, isme negative 3 hai, isme negative 2 hai. Maybe with a different color, so that you can differentiate it in a different way. And if you are assuming that this is a negative sol, let's remove it here, let's write it here two times. If it is a negative sol, then it will be plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Right? So you see what is happening here. It would not matter. Okay, maybe because there are three of these ions, what is flocculating value? 
लेट्स गो बैक टू दैट डेफिनेशन डेफिनेशन क्या थी मिली बोल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इन वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूशन इन लीटर अच्छा ठीक है सबका चार्ज प्लस वन है बट आई थिंक मिली मोल्स ऑफ दिस वुड बी द स्मॉलेस्ट अगर ये नेगेटिव सॉल्व होता तो इट्स ओके भूमि अभी तक बहुत लोग शांत हो गए हैं मैं जस्ट पूछना चाहता हूं एक बार क्विकली वॉट डू यू थिंक अबाउट दिस इस सवाल को थोड़ा सोचना पड़ेगा इज इट अगेटिव सॉल्व और पॉजिटिव सॉल्व अगर नेगेटिव सॉल्व है देन मे बी दिस इज द आंसर नहीं ये वाला नहीं ये वाला तब भी यही आंसर होगा है ना थिंक अबाउट दिस वेदर इट इज नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव फिर भी आंसर ए ही होगा ये आपको समझ में आ रहा है मैंने थोड़ा डिटेल में इसको एनालाइज किया आपके साथ पीपल वर सेइंग बी डिड यू फॉलो व्हाट्स हैपनिंग हियर इट डजेंट मैटर इफ इट्स नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव ठीक है क्योंकि इन ऑल ऑफ दर केस इफ इट वॉज अ पॉजिटिव सॉल्व देन इट इज क्लियर दैट ए इज द आंसर क्यों क्योंकि क्लोराइड जो आयोन है दैट इज That has the smallest charge and is being asked maximum flocculation value क्या है ठीक है अगर पॉजिटिवली चार्ज है अगर नेगेटिवली चार्ज है देन ऑल द काउंट आय प्लस वन मतलब कि कोई भी हो सकता है बट डेफिनेशन ऑफ फ्लॉकुलेशन वैल्यू वॉज की मिली मोल ऑफ स्टफ सो मिली मोल ऑफ स्टफ तो इसका सबसे ज्यादा हो जाएगा सो दिस इज नॉट दी आंसर देन इल बी नेक्स्ट दिस देन नेक्स्ट दिस फिर भी यही आंसर है यू सी दैट ओनली दीपांत सिंह ये मुझे लग रहा है कुछ लोग के सर के ऊपर चला गया इसलिए मैं फिर से बोल रहा हूं बार बार so this was maybe a tricky question in a way but either way answer turns out to be a you guys see that right let me just go up and see kin kin logon ne b bola tha uh poonam kapil shweta deepu are you guys all right i want you to understand this yeah this is one of those unique opportunities where we discuss things a aaram se yeah <laughs> so i hope this is clear theek hai okay theek hai this was in my understanding one of the trickiest questions we have done in this whole chapter right you just have to thoda sochna padta hai okay so far <laughs> agla sawal which of the following ions will have the minimum coagulating value for the sol obtained by adding fecl3 solution to excess of nh what do you think idhar kya ho raha hai you adding fecl3 solution to an excess of nh oh theek hai ओके एसओ फोर टू माइनस थ्री माइनस का नेगेटिव चार्ज टू प्लस का पॉजिटिव चार्ज थ्री प्लस का पॉजिटिव चार्ज ये आपके चार ऑप्शन हैं सो इधर भी आपको यही करना है पहले तो फिगर आउट कि ये पॉजिटिव बनेगा कि नेगेटिव बनेगा बट हियर इट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस यू हैव टू डिसाइड वेदर पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव एंड ये करने के लिए तो मैंने अभी आपको पढ़ाया था सुना था किसी ने हम लोग क्या बोल रहे थे क्या होता है जब एक्सेस ओ एच माइनस आयोन डालते सॉरी जिसके लिए बेटा वॉटर आंसर बताइए वॉट यू गेस थिंक सो वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आस्किंग फॉर द मिनिमम क्वालिटिंग वैल्यू टू गिव यू बिट ऑफ अ हिंट थोड़ा सा हिंट देता हूं क्योंकि आंसर नहीं दे रहा है ओके वन वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड सेज बी यू आर ऑन द राइट ट्रैक दीपान्विता एंड श्वेता right track because it is either b or it is d it is not c or a minimum coagulating value matlab maximum charge let me write that down for you iska matlab maximum charge hai na theek hai agar excess nh dala hai matlab excess oh minus ion to ye sol banta hai negative agar sol mera bana negative to the counter ion that i need needs to be positive let's not call it counter you know let's call it from this whole hardy schulz wala idea right hence the answer should be d theek hai is that okay punam deepu shweta and dipanvita no hold on wo purana wala aap log bhi bol rahe the kya mujhe yaad nahi aa raha hai purana wala bhi a tha in fact so dipanvita shweta deepu and punam is this okay why it is d because ye ye sol jo hai this is a negative sol And not a positive sol. Since ये negative sol है, तो हमको positive ion चाहिए इसको coagulate करने के लिए. और positive ion उसके बाद तो हम मालूम कि it should be maximum charge. ठीक है? We good? Shall we move on to the next one? Yeah? Please ask me if you guys have any doubts. Under the ये वाले ये वाले थोड़े मुश्किल हैं. I'm admitting it to you. थोड़ा सा सोचना पड़ता है, right? 
Under the influence of an electric field, the particles in a sol migrate towards the cathode. The coagulation of the same sol is studied using NaCl, Na2SO4 and Na3PO4 solutions. Their coagulating values are in the order. ठीक है भाई, ये तो थोड़ा सिंपल हो गया, है ना? Coagulating value मांग रहा है. Coagulating value was what? Millimoles of electrolyte per liter of solution. ये तो straight forward हो गया. What do you think the answer is? Straight forward इसलिए हो गया, क्योंकि all of these are Na. यानी कि the sol I have is positive. Does that make sense? Let me think actually. Cathode is where reduction happens. Haan yaar. Positive sol will accept electrons and give you say something like this. If it's accepting electrons then reduction hota hai. Yeah this makes sense. So say AU3 plus yaas tak kuch jata hai. Thik hai. Cool. Works out. Poonam is wale ka bhi answer B. Is wale ka answer B kaise hooga? Is ka answer toh let me cross out the ones I know for sure are off. या तो ये होगा या तो ये होगा है ना इधर है हमारा वन टू थ्री इन दैट ऑर्डर हियर इट इज थ्री टू वन है ना करेक्ट इसी वन टू थ्री या थ्री टू वन रिमेंबर माय फ्रेंड्स द क्वेश्चन इज देर क्वागलेटिंग वैल्यू विल बी इन द ऑर्डर क्वागलेटिंग वैल्यू की डेफिनेशन क्या है मिली मोल ऑफ दिस गाय डिवाइडेड बाय वॉल्यूम ऑफ यू नो द Solution and all of that. So now here, one liter, not volume, let me put that down. One liter of solution. So here, ye to answer ye wala hoga na? Yuki iske millimole sabse zada hogi. Remember, coagulating value is inversely proportional to the coagulating power. <laughs> I know, I know, you're confusing it. Poonam and uh, Asya ji, it's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, Dipanvita is correct, Shweta is correct, Sheikh is correct as well. So the answer should be A. It's okay, it's okay. It's a little bit behind. Don't worry about it. It's okay, Poonam. No problem. It's a little confusing. It's just the things you have to do slowly. If you feel confused, watch this video again. That's the beautiful part about videos, right? You can look at them. How many times you like? Chill. Okay. Let's go. Now, let's look at this. How do you coagulate lime? 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 Right? They really like the, the other chap, which is the <laughs> dispersion medium and dispersed phase are, you know, strongly interacting with each other. So, you have a charge and there's also this solvation that comes into the picture. Solvation kya hota hai? This like dissolves, dissolve like, unlike dissolves, unlike, etc. Right? So, here is a lyophobic sol. Here is a lyophilic sol. Lyophobic matlab ye dono dur rehte hain. Here they're like, they're happy. They're all good. So how do I coagulate this now? One thing is by adding electrolytes, same as before. The other is by adding a solvent that messes things up completely. How, what, what, what do I do here? If I add alcohol or acetone to a hydrophilic sol, then both of these are dehydrating agents. So they dehydrate the sol. Yani ki colloid se pani nikal deta hai. Literally that, yeah? Removes water from sol. Or let me just say colloid directly. Yeah? So you don't, you don't forget that colloid means that the particle will remove the water. So if the water will remove it, then the solvent will remove the effect of polarity. Wala, that goes go away. Okay? So these two ways hai, to coagulate lyophilic salts. Important, although we spread just for a minute on it, but it's important, please take a screenshot of this. Or we'll give you notes as well. Okay? How do you protect lyophobic colloids? The next thing I want to talk about. Okay, we've spoken about how to destroy them. How do you protect it? Lyophilic salts are definitely more stable than lyophobic ones, right? Lyophobic ones, as, as it is, don't like the whole, uh, they, they don't like dispersed medium and dispersion phase don't get along together. So what I'll use is I'll use a lyophilic salt to protect a lyophobic salt. Uno reverse. <laughs> How do you do that? These are called as protective colloids. Check it out, check it out, check it out. So they form a nice layer, a protective layer. And we'll see a quick, uh, you know, simulation and how, how that works. So here you go. This is my lyophobic. This is lyophilic. Now what I do is I surround this lyophobic chap with a lot of lyophilic ones. How do I do that? Because these guys, they like each other. Yeah. And this wants to push it as far away as possible. So let me use two different colors. Red is not a good color, right? Red is like scary. So this is pushing it away. And green is nice. So these pull each other together. Okay. 
So this, these are attractive forces and these are repulsive forces. I know when I say attractive and repulsive, you may think, yeah, yeah, plus and minus charge and all that, but that's not what's happening here, right? This is the idea of lyophobic salts being protected by a layer of lyophilic salts. Okay? Let's take a quick question. Protective salts are lyophilic, lyophobic, both A and B, none of, neither of A and B. Wow. Poonam. My God. Oh, that was for the last question. I thought somebody already answered A. <laughs> A is the right answer for this one as well. Okay. I'm just going to say that and move on because I just told you that protective salts are lyophilic and they protect lyophobic ones. Yes, the with Absolutely. Absolutely. Good job. Okay. What is an emulsion? What is an emulsion? Well, it's a liquid liquid coral system and all I do is, okay, I take very, very finely divided droplets of one liquid and another liquid and they don't like each other. But yeah, I can kind of call a truce between them. I can say, hey, 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 don't fight. We'll, we'll make you guys stable. How? Maybe we get a mediator, something called an emulsifying agent. Okay. So when you, some of these uh, things that are not miscible, like say even fat and water, they are immiscible, right? I bring them together, shake them. At some point, you see these small droplets of oil. But if you shake it, those droplets become very small. After some time, that goes away. So this is what this is an example of such a thing, right? So this is vinegar. Say for example, example at oil. Vinegar kya hota hai? Vinegar is just 8% of acetic acid in water. And both of these are polar. Polar. And what I'm mixing that with is oil. They really don't like each other. But if I mix it together, kind of works out. So what is this? I've got oil and I've got water. And those are the two different kind of emulsions. Yeah, I can have oil dispersed in water or water dispersed in oil. Dispersed in matlab ki, so O in W matlab ki, this is in excess. Water and oil means what this is in excess or oil in excess. Oil and water, oil and water is a very simple emulsion. Hai. Milk is the easiest one. Oh, hey, are you guys answering some old question? Shweta and Poonam and Deepu? Yeah, yeah, I'm at milk right now. I think maybe you guys are watching it thoda sa piche. <laughs> okay, anyway, I guess they'll catch up. That's the funny thing about, uh, oh, hold on. There's a cool animation playing behind me. Um, I'm going to replay that animation because it's so cool. Hold on. How do we do this? Uh, one second. Yeah, let's replay the animation. Okay, so here's milk right there for you. And if you go right down to the molecular level, I just want to do this commentary. There are fat globules. And where's that protein over there? Yeah, you've got, look at that. Inside that, there's casein, which is the protein. This is what stabilizes things. And yeah, it's all dispersed in water. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Okay. Let's look at another one, which is water dispersed in oil. Uh, any comments here that I'm missing? No, just the ones that you had for that old question. Okay. The best example for this is butter. What are we talking about? Let me write that here so that you don't forget it even later on. This is oil. No, this is water dispersed in oil, which means key the main phase, or let's just call this, there are two phases, right? All colloids are two phases. This is the dispersed, uh, dispersion medium oil and water is the dp or dispersed phase cool that's on top of my head okay cool emulsions are usually unstable and you they separate into two what you need is an emulsifying agent to keep them stable there's something you may already have heard of okay any doubts here somebody in the first session first session said that there are two interfaces i mean there, there's an interface and this interface is basically stabilized by this emulsifying agent oh no they said that gas and gas do not form a colloid because there is no interface. I remember somebody saying the using the word interface in that session. That was a beautiful thing to say. Anyway, so this over here emulsifies from a nice film that, you know, stabilizes this whole thing. Awesome. The process of destroying these emulsions is known as demulsification. You know this. Paneer kaise banaya jata hai? Dood se. In milk, you add a little bit of what? Lemon. Right? Thoda sa, dood ko farna bolte, dood kharaab karna, jab thoda kharaab ho jate karo, to usse paneer banta hai. What is paneer? Paneer is fat. And upar paani bhi aata hai. There's water, not upar, sorry. Niche paani aata hai. Fat obviously, paneer floats on top, water goes down. Why? Because water is more dense than paneer. Right? Fat is less dense than oil. Okay. 
you can do this by many different things centrifugation freezing and heating anyway with that we have come to the last part of this session which is colloids among us what are colloids among us why is the sky blue was my nila q pani gila gila q you can ask the other question also asma hai gila q pani nila nila q right that also works but anyway <laughs> so dust particles and water suspended in air they scatter light and that's why sky is blue what about fog or mist hmm you know this is well there's a lot of air dust around it and you know when it cools down a little bit you've got the whole moisture there yeah and ye ye aapne thandi jagah pe dekha hoga there is a concept of dew point that's mentioned in ncert read up on it later but at there is a temperature at which jo moisture hai wo saturate ho jata hai ek ek value hoti hai and agar thandak badhti jati hai to wo jo pani hota hai hawa mein that tends to condense and that's what you see rain drops i mean dew drops on leaves isi karan ki wajah se ki subah subah 4 5 baje bhor mein koi uthta hai to you get to see all of these things this is also the reason behind rain बारिश जो होती है क्लाउड्स में अराउंड डस्ट द सेम ड्यू फॉर्मेशन हैपेंस नॉट ड्यू स्पेसिफिकली बट पानी उसके अराउंड आता है एंड दैट्स बेसिकली अ सॉल नाउ चार्जेस आर देयर ऑन क्लाउड्स एज वेल एंड जब ऑपोजिटली चार्ज क्लाउड्स कम टुगेदर देन बूम बारिश इंटरेस्टिंगली यू कैन आल्सो डू आर्टिफिशियल रेन सीडिंग बाय द सेम थिंग यू गेट चार्ज सैंड पार्टिकल्स एंड और चार्ज सॉल्स एंड देन यू पुट ऑन एन ऑपोजिट ऑपोजिटली चार्ज क्लाउड एंड इट वर्क्स obviously you don't know for sure what's the charge of the cloud unless you you know with with amazing meteorological super computers i'm not messing about about yeah to do anything with weather you literally need super computers to figure out what weather patterns are which is why you never know ki are in bangalore se ki barish ho raha hai nahi hoti hai aise barish nahi hone wali barish hoti hai it's very 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 hard to uh, figure out weather patterns anyway blood also is a colloid uh, read up more about this there was an idea about How blood clotting happens in NCERT? Very very lightly, एक दो लाइन बोला है वो आप उसमें देख लेना ठीक है Any doubts so far? Are we good here? Just a couple of more minutes to go and I'll let you guys go. Are we all right? Just checking in. Coming towards the end of surface chemistry, just checking in quickly if everyone here is all right uh, and this makes sense to you. Any doubts? Are we good? जब तक सवाल नहीं आते सब लोग शांत बैठते हैं but that's okay i'll just continue if you have any doubts please let me know okay so here's an application of all of this right we can use everything we've learned electrical properties and all that to precipitate out smoke chimneys coming uh, smoke coming out of chimneys at homes maybe not so much but industrially jab smoke nikalta hai to itna zyada nikalta hai that could really mess up the environment okay so you have carbon where is the nice yellow color carbon arsenic compounds and all of that coming out there but all of them are charged so what i do is i take something called a cotterel smoke precipitator okay and this is a diagram so i have a battery over here what this battery is doing is imparting a negative charge to this plate so i know that maybe the smoke must be positively charged aur ye isko precipitate kar jata hai it's as simple as that bas yahi cheez hai now this will be very easy because jo humne everything we've done so far right so smoke is basically put through this chamber and there is a weight at the bottom and this has a charge and that charge is opposite that of smoke bas yahi simple cheez hai aur usse ho jata hai precipitate when it comes in contact with this that's it another application is purification of drinking water the whole ro thing jo aapne bahut samay dekha hoga of all these advertisements right uh you have a lot of suspended impurities fitkari yani ki alum is put what is fitkari ya alum uh, aapko formula yaad hai al2 so4 whole thrice dot k2 so4 dot i think 24 h2o please look it up but this is what is used to coagulate all suspended impurities why do you use this now you know because of hardy schulz rules <laughs> yeah kyun hum log use karte hain because of this guy here aluminum 3 plus is amazing it's an absolutely great flocculating agent it also completely messes up the mud particles makes them coagulate coagulate etc etc all right anmol hi bro <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay hi 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 admol <laughs> what's happening okay great good 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 um uh, sure in medicines as well silver salts i'm going to quickly write this down because there's way too much information in ncert right uh, which you just have to read and make notes out of i mean there's nothing much for us to do besides that to because neat is like that it it bilkul ncert ko chhan ke wahan se sawal puchta hai uh yeah also milk of magnesia 
which is MGO hold twice. All of these are used in different ways. Please read up on how and why in medicinal uses. And these salts have very large surface area, hence this is great. Hi, I said it. Molji, you are saying it. What is happening, bro? Anyway, photographic films and plates. AGBR emulsion is coated over celluloid films to make this work. Uh, AGBR is silver br bromide and this is put in gelatin over glass plate or celluloid films. Now it seems that now I am just, you know, like a news reader telling you information. But that's what this chapter is, my good friends, what to do. Rubber industry, latex is also made because of, uh, latex is basically a colloid. Yeah? Or what application is? Last one, I swear. Huh, paints. Okay? Cool. Quick questions. Okay, wake up everybody. One, two questions and we are done. Which property of colloids is not dependent on the charge of colloidal particles? A. Coagulation. B. Electrophoresis. C. Electroosmosis. And lastly, D. Tyndall effect. What do you guys think? Anmol, jawab to do. Hai to bol de, tum jawab bhi nahi de rahe ho ka. Which property of colloids is not dependent on the charge of colloidal particles? Coagulation, electrophoresis, electroosmosis or Tyndall effect. Out of all of this, if I were to just eliminate options, before I start giving you the answer, Deep, Deepu has already given me one. Deepu is saying D, RCS is saying D. Awesome, awesome. All of these depend on charge. And Tyndall effect is the right answer. Good one, good one. Let's do rapid fire. Ek aur sawal, ek aur sawal. Ah, iska answer dikha diya. Which one of the following methods is commonly used method for destruction of colloid? Dialysis, condensation, filtration by annual membrane or by adding electrolyte? What do you guys think? Shweta, was that for the last one or this one? Deepu is saying D for this one as well. Good job, good job. Yes, absolutely right. Electrolyte say, hum log destroy kar dete colloid ko. All of these could also make it work. But the com most common one is this and also ye jab zada ho jata hai, you know, over, overtly doing this maybe does this. But for now, I think the answer would be this. It was a controversial sawal tha 2000 mein anyway. Okay, ek aur sawal. One more one for you. When a few typical solutes are separated by a particular selective membrane such as protein particles, blood corpuscles, this process is called, oof, transpiration kaan se aagaya bhai? Transmission, transpiration. Endosmosis, dialysis, yeah, diffusion. Wow, bhari bhari bio ke terms. What do you guys think? Ye me Deepu already. No, Deepan is very confidently saying C this time. Do you, do do her friends? Oh, Deepu also saying D. C. Sorry. Definitely not transpiration and endosmosis. Ye to humne pure chapter padhai nahi. Suddenly kahan se aa jayega? Shweta is saying D. Okay. Asya is saying D. C. Okay. The answer is dialysis. ठीक है? It may sound like diffusion. Uh, I can see why you would say diffusion, Deepu. I'm sorry, not Deepu. Shweta, you may say diffusion. But here's the thing, right? We have specifically this in detail. We have dialysis. Bolte Revise that chapter. It's possible that maybe, uh, you know, Shweta, you missed out on the last session. Usko in detail. Mein mein dialysis bar mein bataya. All right. Sky appears blue. Colloidal particles or dust scatter blue light. <laughs> yes, I think we'll skip this question. Or think about it. Maybe answer in the homework or something. This is good. I know all of you know the answer to this. Let's see. Let's see. Do we have another one? Yes, we have another one. Colloidal solution of gold prepared by different methods for different colors because of different diameters of colloid gold particles, variable valency of gold, different concentration of gold particles or impurities produced by different methods. Dipanvita saying, hey, are sahi bola, Dipanvita, don't retract your message. Dipanvita, ye a hi hai. Bilkul sahi hai. Absolutely right. It's because of the different diameters of colloidal particles. Remember, the most small particle was red. As you keep increasing, it's a bluish color ka hota hai and all of that. Purple hota hai. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A is the right answer here as well. You're all doing amazing at the rapid fire. Last sawal. A colloidal solution can be purified by the following method. Dialysis, peptization, filtration, ya fir oxidation. What do you think? I think peptization was the way to, you know, make colloids. Filtration was also a nice way to purify them. Oxidation was a way to make them as well. Achha. Filtration nahi. Oh, nahi. Ye ultra filtration was a way to do it. Nahi. Ye bhi nahi hoga. To isri answer hoga dialysis. This is literally not a level of need. You can Google this question, my good friend. <laughs> Tum char bar bolo to kya nahi hoga. This won't be correct or what? <laughs> Absolutely right. Good job. Good job, everybody. A. Awesome. What is peptization? Conversion of, a, I know I, last, I said last question, I just wanted you to stick around. <laughs> Couple of more questions. Conversion of a colloidal, uh, conversion of a colloid into precipitate form, conversion of precipitate into colloidal sol, conversion of metal into colloidal sol by passage of electric current, or is it conversion of colloidal sol into micromolecules? What is peptization? Deepu, are you saying A for this one or purane wale ka ap A bol rahi thi? 
आई थिंक पुराने वाले का ये बोल रही थी राइट डायलिसिस या एब्सोल्युटली ग्रेट आ दीपू से सी ऑन दिस वन एंड आशी आल्सो से सी ओके पेप्टाइजेशन इज कन्वर्जन ऑफ मेटल इनटू क्लोराइड सॉल्ट बाय सो इलेक्ट्रिक करंट अरे नहीं यार पेप्टाइजेशन थोड़ी ना होता है सी दीपान्विता इज सेइंग बी यस दीपान्विता एब्सोल्युटली राइट this is more of a summary of everything we've done so far so maybe you've forgotten what happened in the last few sessions but dekho peptidization mein kya tha hum log thoda sa electrolyte dalte the a little bit of a small amount of electrolyte and because of that jo already bana hua precipitate tha wo wapas ban jata hai hamara colloid theek hai that was the idea wo humne uh, in the you know i think third or second session mein isko kiya tha peptidization ko third session most likely oof okay cool i'll spare you guys the summary this is the last session and i've taken 10 minutes of your time uh, you'll have access to these what do you call them the slides take it uh, naram se dekhna have a great weekend thank you all for sticking around um any doubts a quick question koi doubt se to pooch lo and sorry ravi to keep you waiting <laughs> he's been very patient with this yeah 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 long day long friday for everybody we all good Okay thank you so much for sticking around uh, I'll see you on Monday with thermo and then I think on Tuesday with metallurgy all right thanks Deepanvita thanks for the encouragement and support as always thanks everybody I'll see you all bye bye